Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the two images that I recently posted on Instagram that uh, sort of a lot of people were talking about and I'm just going to explain to you what the transformations were, what happened and why I looked like that when I was 17 and why I look like this now at 35. Yeah. Right, so one obvious thing that you can see between the two pictures is that I, it just looks like I was, um, I don't know, four or five shades darker than I am now. Um, and there are several reasons for it. And one of them was that picture was actually taken for a college um, advertisement. Um, and this was literally just after I had come back from a three week India trip. And that three week India trip involved going to loads of temples, going shopping, and even getting on like public buses and everything. So basically me and my mom were out and about. We were not sitting in any aircon buildings or aircon um, cars. It was literally like walking in the sun a lot. So I was super tanned, um, but that's like the only picture that I have from around that time, weirdly enough. But um, so yeah, so it has nothing Thing to do with skin lightening or bleaching or whatever else there is that people seem to ask me about and I take that as you know I get very offended when people ask me that because I would never do such a thing like I feel like I encourage women to be who they are and it would be silly for me to then go and do something to completely change myself so no I do not believe in it I've um, I'm in a way glad that I grew up in Germany and in the UK where I was not surrounded by that kind of thing. Like I didn't, I had a lot of German friends and I had a lot of non-Asian friends as well in the UK. Um, so my skin tone was never an issue and my skin tone was never something that anybody talked about. The only person that used to always tell me off was my mum. My mum used to ban me from going out and playing out um, or sitting in the garden or anything like that because she just wanted me to be as fair as possible. I'm so glad I brainwashed my mum now. <laughs> I've literally, it's like smack across the head and saying to her, look, don't encourage this. It's, it's beautiful to be whatever, however you were born with and you shouldn't wish to be somebody else and stuff. So yeah, so my mum doesn't say anything anymore. Um, but yeah, and also living in Malaysia, which is another thing, some of my friends have actually pointed this out to me. They were like, I swear you look different. Like your skin tone looks different now than it did when you were living in London. When I was living in London, I used to wear foundation and a lot, like a foundation that was one shade darker than me actually, darker than my skin tone. And I also used to bronze a lot. I, I loved that look and my hair was a lot, lot lighter as well. Like I had a very, very light brown. Um, and. I don't understand why people don't know this, but when your hair is dark, you know, your face becomes a contrast color. So your face complexion actually looks brighter. When your hair is light, okay, and I know a lot of people love, you know, getting their hair colored blonde and whatever, which is cool if you like the whole tan look, but you need to understand that your complexion is going to change. It's gonna give you a different look. So I've gone darker with my hair as well this year when for seven or eight years I used to have lighter hair color. And so that's made me look a little bit lighter, I guess, than what I looked like before. I'm trying to be so careful with the words that I choose because I do not want to get trolled on here, but I'm just trying to explain that, you know, that's what it is. I've not done anything. Being a makeup artist myself, I've never changed anybody's skin color with foundation. You know, I, I think at the beginning of my career, people used to ask me, they used to ask, oh, can you just do one shade lighter? You know, it wouldn't even sometimes be the bride. It would be like the bride's mother who would say, oh, can you just um, make her like two or three shades lighter? You know, she'll look better or something. And I'm just like, no. That's absolutely not right. I'm not gonna do that. And if that's something that you really, really want, then you need to go and find another makeup artist. And I used to just put my foot down. There was no way that I was gonna do that. And it looks ridiculous. Like you look gray and ashy and you know, your neck is a different color, your face is a different color. So it's, it, it's, it's a shame. It's, it's really a shame. And I'm pretty sure there are people watching this right now saying, oh, it's easy for you to say, but it, it really isn't. My mum used to like, you know, tell me off and my mum used to want me to wear, you know, brands like Fair and Lovely and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I got my fair share um, growing up, but I guess I was lucky living with kids or being surrounded by kids and people growing up who didn't 
give a crap about my skin tone in a sense like you know um especially during my teenage years i guess like it wasn't a thing so i'd never really thought of it as a thing um i mean when i first moved to germany i was bullied for my color but that's because i was the only colored person in my entire school um but yeah then you know growing up it, it, you know, it was like people wanted to look like me. The Germans would be like, wow, I want a tan. I'm in the, you know, sunbed like 24 seven, but I still don't get your color. So yeah, things change, man. Like people are never happy with what they have, but that's all I'm gonna say about skin tones. The next thing you can obviously see is eyebrows. I was actually born with a monobrow, monobrow. I don't know if you've ever known about, you know, I think that the, the I think the show was called Hey Arnold. It was like this cartoon, and Helga, this character in this um, in this cartoon, used to have a monobrow, and they used to bully her <laughs> in that cartoon about her monobrow as well. But yeah, anyway, um, I looked like that. I looked like Helga from Hey Arnold, and I was bullied for it as well. I was bullied for being uh, very hairy. I had a very hairy face, you know, upper moosh the monobrow i had it all i had it all but then i think there was a 90s trend where you know thin eyebrows was cool and people used to draw on their eyebrows people used to you know and i used to wonder like how did they do that now i know how to prosthetically get rid of it but back then i didn't so what did i do i shaved my eyebrows off completely shaved it off used a liquid liner and drew on an eyebrow okay please don't ever ever do that because it took years for my eyebrows to grow back especially when they grow all over the place like you don't even have a shape and then I think when I was like uh, 21 I think I was I believe 21 22 um, I was so sick and tired of my eyebrows just being all over the place and I spent about eight uh, eight months sorry not eight years eight months growing out my eyebrows eight months and you know what I did I actually got myself a fringe done so I literally cut a fringe okay that just about covered my eyebrows so nobody cared nobody even noticed that I was growing out my eyebrows nobody even looked at my eyebrows because I had bangs like proper bangs up to here okay just like like this and yeah and then once the eight months were over I made sure that I went to somebody that was you know highly recommended um, so I went to the same lady in London for many many years her name is Vanita by the way she's from uh, the hair company North Harrow it's right by the Tesco Express but anyway um, so yeah me my cousins a lot of us have been going to her for years for almost a decade maybe maybe more um, but yeah, so she started slowly. So she didn't fix the problem immediately. She slowly started leaving certain gaps and stuff to make sure that it grows up even more. And that took, I don't know, maybe another year. Um, so yeah, so it took me almost two years to grow my eyebrows to what it was meant to be. And yeah, now I am happy with my eyebrows. They can go thicker, they actually can. Uh, but whenever I have them really thick, people don't seem to like it. And everyone goes on and on and on about my eyebrows. That I had to block the word eyebrows of all my social media platforms because I was so sick and tired of people commenting on me having too much eyebrows when people, I used to shave it off and I had no eyebrows. But yeah, anyway, I'm happy now, so that's what matters really. And how to grow them, I didn't do anything. I think people talk about castor oil and so many different things, but I, I just let them grow up. I guess maybe, in hindsight, maybe I would have used um, oils if I knew it back then, uh, but I didn't. I didn't know anything when I was 21, so I just grew it out, and then now it's like this. And I don't do anything for my eyebrows now as well. I just like fill them in with, um, pencil and then I use powder. The reason I don't use any gel or liquid products on my eyebrows is because I don't want to end up rubbing too much to get the product off because I feel when you rub too much, you end up um, losing eyebrow hair. Um, so then I, I don't really want to do it like, you know, I've been told not to scrub my eyebrows too much because then you do lose hair and it does take a long time for them to grow. Another thing also is I usually like to sleep on this side of my face. So because I sleep on this side um, and the pillowcase, now we've changed our pillowcases by the way, but I didn't know this for the long time, for the longest time. If your pillowcase is not smooth, so ideally try and have like satin or cotton or anything that doesn't have any like 
dentures or you know like some pillowcases or bed sheets they have like some kind of texture um, so when you're like sleeping on it and you're rubbing your face against it and stuff what it does it rubs and then over time you end up losing hair on on the ends and stuff and I didn't know that until one of my, until my eyebrow lady until Vanita told me this she was like do you sleep on the side of your face and I was like how did you know and then she explained it to me and then we changed all of our bed sheets and um, uh, pillowcases and stuff and and now I don't have that problem anymore like I changed it about a year ago so yeah so I think in in that year a lot of that hair had grown back so that's eyebrows the other thing was skin so um, I don't know if you can see very clearly in that picture but I did have a few acne scars it was sort of the beginning of my acne like I know a lot of people go through acne during their teenage years for me it wasn't that for me it actually started when I turned about like 17 18 I know you're still a teenager but like yeah it was like late like it was around 17 18 and then it kind of went really bad in my early 20s and I used to have um, really bad cystic acne and I used to get like three or four at the same time in my face and they used to be like random and because I didn't really know much about it I used to pick them and then my skin would scar and I I don't have that problem as much now than I used to, but I used to scar really, really badly and it would take sometimes six months to eight months for that scar to disappear and I never really knew what to do, what to do with it. So I'd end up putting more foundation on because of the scar or the spot and it didn't really do anything. Yes, it temporarily covered it, but the bumps I couldn't do anything about. Um, so I went through that for the longest time and didn't know how to fix it. I kept thinking like, what the hell is happening? Um, so yeah, to be honest, going to a nutritionist helped me the most and understanding. See, like let's say when you get spots in certain areas, you then understand it's hormonal. If you get it around the cheek or forehead or whatever, it's something to do with your liver or kidneys or whatever. So you'll be surprised how your skin is to do a lot with your gut and the things that you're eating. So now I've understood that when I eat too much dairy or fried food, fried food is the biggest culprit for me. Fried food gives me like clogged pores immediately. Like I'll have tiny, tiny, tiny little bumps and spots the next day or two days after. Dairy, same thing. So chocolates and dairy and stuff like that. Um, after two, three days, it just gives me really big spots. And so there's a lot of food that I was eating um, that sort of gave me bad skin. And in terms of like acne scarring and stuff like that once I pick my spots or whatever, it now goes away better because I I spend a lot of money on skincare. So I've understood my skin. So it's really important, really important that you do go and see a skin specialist or a dermatologist. I've never actually seen a dermatologist. I mean, I, I did a skin analysis a long time ago. So it made me understand that my skin, I have large pores. I generally have an oily skin and I have quite textured skin. So I knew that there were all these aspects that I needed to fix and how do I correct them. And so that's when I looked into products for oily skin, products for, um, you know, uh, acne prone skin, uh, products for like, you know, um, large pores, textures, whatever. And once I did the research and looked into it and spoke to doctors or whatever, I was able to understand what works for my skin and what doesn't work for my skin as well. So it's trial and error like I'm not a beautician I am not a skin specialist either I really am not like I'm a makeup artist I'm a trained makeup artist so we don't really know that much about skincare it's just over years we learn and we understand what works um, for you know we know the basics the foundations of it and stuff and so when people ask me oh what what would you recommend because I have this or I have that it's really, really hard for me to suggest because I don't see me and my friend for example me and my best friend we both have exactly we both have oily skin we both have oily skin we both have large pores and we both have textured skin yet a lot of the products that I use actually don't work for her so it's hard for me to recommend products um, on social media which is why I try and not do that I only share the products that I use and that work for me but I never say hey you should use this or you should do that like you know uh, the products that I use have worked wonders like honestly it's like miracle and whenever people ask me oh 
like your skin looks great or your hair looks great what do you use and then i tell them and they're like oh that's too expensive oh my god that's like luxury i'm not going to be able to do that and i can't afford that and but then to me i'm just like well you wanted to know what i do uh i've seen a nutritionist i eat super healthy now and i have a personal trainer i have i spend a lot on my skincare i spend a lot on my hair care and these are the things that i do to maintain um whatever you guys think looks nice on me um so then i don't know what else to suggest because this is what i do and it's not because i have the money or i don't I, it took me years to understand that and i'm glad that my mom was somebody even in my teenage years who put so much importance into skincare um that she used to always say to me look let's go shopping let me buy you like expensive skincare for her expensive back then was like clinique and clarence and she was just like let's go i'm gonna buy you the whole range i want you to start using this because you need to take care of your skin and i'm so glad that she actually told me this because then i thought to myself oh my god so for me growing up i at the time i could only afford a uh, body shop which i I still think Body Shop is amazing, but Body Shop, and then when I was working at MAC uh, for three years, the girls that worked there suggested Estee Lauder because Estee Lauder owns MAC and it was just easy for them to just recommend it to me. And Estee Lauder big time changed my skin. Like Estee Lauder was the beginning of my change. And then slowly by slowly, I started going and, you know, researching independent products. Like I, you know, now I use La Mer, Sunday Riley, Tata Harper, um, herbivore. So there's a mixture of uh, organic, there's a mixture of clean stuff and also some, you know, some that are maybe chemicals or whatever. So I have like a variety of things and I used to spend a lot of money on getting professional facials done. But now that I buy a lot of this stuff and I buy sheet masks and, you know, I take care of my skin in terms of cleansing and looking after it so well that I don't need to spend money on facials anymore. I don't need to spend money on laser treatments and stuff for my face. Like, I don't feel that I do. I find getting facials done are for people who really have no idea what they're doing with their skin. And, um, you know, it's also getting pampered and stuff as well. So I, I still tell my brides to get facials done if they don't know what to do with their skin and stuff. So, but it's just, I don't feel like I do. Um, so yeah, that's changed a lot in terms of like scarring and, um, spots and um, like acne like I, I don't really get acne anymore and I don't scar easily anymore either um, so there's a lot of things that have changed uh, for me because of all the things that I do and yeah and the other and the last thing that I would say is I still think that I looked amazing when I was 17 years old. So that older picture is by no means a transformation in terms of like, oh, I used to look like that and now I look like this. It's nothing like that. For me, I look at that picture and I'm just like, hmm, like, you know, I look like myself and I look, I still feel like that's still me. And it's just these little, little, like, superficial things that I've just explained, you know, whether it's the eyebrows, whether it's, you know, nutrition, this, you know, there's so many things that I feel like you can do yourself you know it's not about oh you're born that way or you have great genetics like forget all of that forget when people say that to you or when you look in the mirror and you feel that way no there are so many things that you can do to feel better and if that means nutrition eating better looking after your skin looking after your hair because i think a lot of people ask me about hair loss and i'm just like i don't know what to say like i've put a lot of care and emphasis into my hair for over 10 years. Like I spend the money to go and professionally get my hair cut regularly. Um, even if I get my hair colored, I get it done professionally. I don't do it at home anymore. I used to when I was a teenager. Um, but you know, so there's a lot of stuff that I would spend my money on and to maintain and look after my hair. And you know, my mom's the same. My mom looks after her hair and she has freaking amazing hair. So I think it's, it's really, really important the priorities that you have of course you do not need to have your hair done or do your makeup or invest so much money in skincare or whatever like you don't have to do all of those things to look good or anything like that please don't think that i'm trying to tell you that i'm just trying to say that if you just start by having the knowledge of your skin 
from the inside, your gut from the inside, all the other things like good skin or good hair just comes from eating really, really well and living a great lifestyle. You know, from sleeping well to not smoking, not drinking, and you know, like there's a lot of stuff that you could avoid in terms of lifestyle that would also improve your skin and your hair. Um, and then if you want to, you can go and do your makeup or you can get your hair professionally colored or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I just think it's really, really important that you understand what goes inside because whatever goes inside reflects on the outside i'm not joking so yes i hope this was useful and i hope that none of you were offended i hope i didn't offend anybody or maybe maybe i didn't put, put my point across like the way i did this video is as if i'm talking to some of my friends um so please forgive me if i've said something that i shouldn't have because i know i have people from all ages that do watch my videos um but i just wanted to say to you guys that you know what feel good feel good about yourself and you know look in the mirror and be a good person man that i think that's where it all starts like just be good and then everything else will just fall into place and don't ever 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 let anybody tell you you know to look different or to be different be yourself